Coming up in this video, I will show you around this steel former Finnish expedition vessel that was built in 1963 and rebuilt in 1997. The boat was actually designed by the Finnish government and her round bilge steel hull has proven itself to be capable of some serious passage making in the sorts of sea states that would keep most explorer yachts tied up alongside. I cannot wait to show you around this really stunning boat really really impressive vessel before i do please don't forget to give the video a like and also please don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel the boat has a length overall of 28.8 meters with a length at the waterline of 24 meters she has an impressive beam of 6.7 meters with a draft of 2.95 meters her air draft is 8 metres and inside she has a headroom of 1.9 metres. She was built in Finland at the Valmet shipyard and has a displacement of 165 tonnes with a 5,000 litre or around 1,320 US gallons ballast tank. For those not from a nautical background, then what does this actually mean? Well, the round bilge hull translates to a smoother ride in choppy seas whilst the 6.7 metre beam translates to lots of interior space. What an absolutely beautiful looking ship. I really can't wait to take you around this boat. If you haven't already, please don't forget to give the video a like because it means that more people will get to see it. Not only is the hull steel, but the superstructure is also made of steel. In fact, the hull thickness is eight millimetres, whilst the superstructure is six millimetres thick. Even her deck plates are six millimetres thick. So if you do go on some serious expeditions, even bumping into some pesky floatsome is not going to stress this tough hull. The boat really is built like a tank, albeit a nautical tank. Before I show you around, let us first have a stroll around the upper deck so you really do get a feel for her unique features. There's more up here than meets the eye. This is the entrance into the engine room and trust me, you won't want to miss that part of the tour. So please make sure you stay tuned. As you walk towards the stern of the vessel, I'm sure that you would have already noticed her canoe shaped stern. Some benefits of having a stern that is this shape include better performance in following or quartering seas. Its gentle curve carves its way through the water cleanly, reducing stern waves and keeping the boat more stable when you encounter those big seas, which no matter how good your weather planning is, you are bound to encounter at some point. In here we have the sauna. Now the boat at the moment is winterized, so obviously it's not being used as a sauna, but yeah, check that out. What a place to relax. And then once you get to your required body temperature, the best place to cool off is of course in the sea which is only going to be a few steps outside of the sauna. Absolutely stunning. I love it. And check out the high threshold on that door there. You know, this boat is made for some serious passage making in all types of weather conditions. When you walk around the upper deck, you can really sense and feel that. It's also worth pointing out that the boat was last anti-fouled in November 2023. The owner-operator of this vessel, a professional skipper, really has taken good care of this boat and it really does show. We come out onto the bow now and look at the angle of the bow as it goes up towards the forepeak and also the flaring on the gunnels as well. The amount of water that the gunnels on this boat must be able to keep from coming on the deck must be really, really impressive. The boat has two Clipper 250 anchors and a 120 and 150 metre chain. The windlass, which is currently under the blue cover, is 380 volts. 
Later on in the video, we will head up to the bridge roof where I will show you some more features on board this rugged vessel, which really did surprise me when I stumbled upon them. So please make sure that you stay tuned. The high bulwarks and wide side decks on this boat really do help you to feel safe and secure as you move around the vessel. Obviously we're alongside at the moment, but you can imagine when you're at sea in rough conditions, you feel really secure. So as you enter this space, aft is where we find the owner's cabin. I'm gonna have a look around there in a second. And down this stairwell is where we find the vast accommodation area. And again, we'll be looking down there in a moment. First, we will look around the big saloon that comes complete with its own bar area. The headroom in here is 1.9 meters, and this really does feel like an area of the boat where you would be hard pressed to be in a situation where you actually run out of space, even with all of your guests up here. The boat does have central heating on board with an electric and diesel system installed. The portholes and windows throughout the boat are made of aluminium. As you can see, there are a decent amount of windows throughout this area to ensure that plenty of natural light fills the space. It also means that you can still sit and enjoy the seascape, even when the conditions outside turn a bit gnarly. As we head back towards the bar, you'll see over on the port side of the vessel is the entertainment area, where you can sit down and relax whilst watching some TV. Over here, conveniently located next to the bar, we have yet more seating. And then of course, we come to one of my favorite areas in this space, the bar. The galley has wood countertops, a stainless steel sink, a four burner electric hob, an oven, a microwave, and of course a fridge and a freezer. And yes, in case you are wondering, there is additional cold storage space, but we'll be checking that area of the boat a little bit later on in the yacht tour. For now, let's peer through this porthole to enjoy some of the scenery before we head up onto the bridge. As we make our way up to the bridge, it's worth pointing out that I now have a new Linktree page. If you've watched any of my previous videos, then you might have noticed that I always mention about the gear that I use in my videos. I'll put affiliate links in the video description, as well as the books that I mentioned that I think are really worthwhile reading if you're planning your own circumnavigation or your own trip. Now, instead of listing all those links in the video description, there's gonna be one link in the video description as well as being pinned in the comments. So feel free to check it out for all of my best playlists and other services as well. But here we are up on the bridge and what a bridge it is. You get a really good view because of the numerous windows up here, which I know sounds silly, but for a boat of this age, you tend to find up on the bridge, there's fewer windows and wider stanchions, which means that you would normally not get as good a view as you get on this particular wheelhouse. I also love this raised seating area here. What a fantastic place for your friends and guests to sit back and enjoy the view. At the helm position, we find all of the essential equipment that we need for a long range autonomous cruising. There's a Furuno color video sounder, as well as a forward looking depth sounder. There's also a Furuno color fish finder. The boat currently has just the one radar. The forward looking depth sounder is particularly handy when you're navigating through areas which are tidal, which where I live is something that is very common, which is why a forward looking depth sounder is so handy. And if you prefer paper rather than digital charts, there's a large chart table as well. When I was talking to the owner of this amazing vessel, he was telling me that often it's just him and his wife operating this vessel, which when you consider a size is really impressive but it goes to show that you've got everything you need up here to ensure that you can operate this vessel with minimal crew, if any crew at all. Before we take a look around the rest of the upper deck, including this area, which is the boat deck that can also be used to stow your car, let's head up on top of the bridge roof. This is the bit where I try and navigate a wet and slippery ladder one-handed. So as I said earlier on in the video, the boat is winterized at the moment, which is why we've got this ladder on here but obviously there are ladders that uh, are fitted on this particular space when the boat is being operated in case you're wondering what this screen is here over on the port side that is basically a windshield so that when the boat is being operated up here because there is a helm station over here on the starboard side anybody else who happens to be here up here with you 
who doesn't want to get buffeted by the wind can stand behind this. Also something that's worth pointing out is that this radar mast can be lowered as well. It's a huge radar mast. You might have noticed it, but no, that is not a barbecue. It is a helm station. Neatly stowed away under here, rather than sausages and burgers, we have all of the controls that will enable you to captain this ship from this position. The controls are hydraulic. Now, when I came up here with the owner a short while ago and the broker, I asked what that was because I haven't seen anything like that before. But if you ever motor along the Rhine, then you probably know what it is. So let us all know in the comments what that is. Help everybody out because I would try and explain it to you, but I wouldn't do it justice. But as far as I'm aware from memory, I know we only spoke about it with the owner about 20 minutes ago, you display this when you're gonna be navigating along the Rhine on the wrong side. But I might be wrong. I'm sure that you'll correct me in the comments if I've got that wrong. Also stowed away up here are four emergency light batteries, which are only 18 months old. As you can see, this boat has a dry exhaust with an outlet in the funnel. Some of the benefits of a dry exhaust include reduced noise as the gases travel out directly and through mufflers. So on longer passages, this really does make a difference. It also means that there is less cabin heat as no running water through the system means less waste heat being distributed inside the vessel, which in turn should mean less reliance on the AC in warmer climates. If this was your boat, where would you take her and why? Let me know in the comments. This is a huge space that could be used as a sun deck, could carry your tenders. And the owner was telling me that he actually, on occasion, has used this area to transport his car when he takes his family on the voyages that they go on together. Uh, but that's how big this area is. I don't know whether the camera does it justice, but you can actually fit a car up here as well. Um, obviously, we've got the port entrance to the wheelhouse and the starboard entrance there as well. The deck crane on this boat is electric and the vessel comes with a six person Terry GRP dinghy that is under that cover. Remember this ladder that I'm currently descending is just a temporary one. You can probably see the two wooden ladders on the port side of the boat deck. They were moved from the wheelhouse out onto the boat deck just whilst I was filming this footage. Those of you with a keen eye for ship's husbandry probably have already noticed that the high wear areas have been repainted. So let's head back along the port side deck. Again, I'm going to take you down in the engine room in a few moments. But first, I want to show you the interior spaces and the accommodation areas. In total, there are 16 berths on this boat, spread out in seven spacious and roomy cabins. The cabin's interior is finished in nut and the floor has a cork covering on it. The living areas are very functional and are well suited to the sort of environment where you would expect this vessel to end up operating in. So let's have a look around. Okay, over here on the port side, we've got a double cabin, nicely laid out, uh, considerably sized porthole over there. So lots of natural light into this area and a great space over here to sit down, catch up with your emails, do some work uh, in between meals or whatever it is you're going to be doing on board it's a great place to come and just catch up with some stuff uh, over here have the functional head and wet room as well the basin over there yeah. standard salute which you can't really see in that mirror but no, no, no problem okay let's head forward into the second cabin another double berth here plenty of headroom got some lights above the head over there so you can catch up with some reading or whatever it is that you want to do uh, we've got a shower over here decent sized shower and look at the size of that porthole there's two in here so you get a bit more light than the other cabin and another place to sit down uh, and do some work or just relax and chill out. Okay, let's continue forward. Uh, just so you can orientate yourself, starboard side, that side, port side, that side. 
Uh, in here we have a utility room. So we've got a washer in here and another toilet and another shower behind that door. Another porthole with some privacy glass on it. To give the compulsory salute as you were. And a radiator over there on the bulkhead. Let's continue forward. Another cabin over here on the port side. Another double cabin. I'm going to call that a double. You could definitely fit two people on there. Oh, I'll turn that back on. There we go. Uh, porthole behind the shutter over there. Uh, another porthole. As you can tell, obviously we're getting near the bow now, so you really notice the incline on the uh, side of the hull there. Uh, big sink. So you've got the mirror. Lots of cabinetry, lots of space to stow your gear. Another radiator over there on the bulkhead. And again, this cabin comes with a place where you can sit down and do some work, do some emails. As you can tell, I'm a bit of a workaholic, always thinking about doing work. Uh, let's come over into another cabin. We've got a twin single here, and a bunk bed configuration. Again, plenty of light in here, plenty of headroom as well. And we've got another desk and another shelf on that bulkhead. Let's continue up. Okay, yeah, we've got another cabin in here. Now I was being shown uh, around this boat. This is only the second time I've looked around here. So it's almost like exploring it again. This boat is so big. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm exploring it again with you guys. Uh, so we've got a twin uh, single in here in a bunk bed configuration again. Another desk area here. Another porthole over there on the starboard side. Another porthole over there on the port side. And a radiator. Uh, this cabinet from memory is used to house the gear uh, for the bow thruster. Not the gear, obviously not the, not the mechanical gear, but the electrical gear. Uh, like a switch room type setup. Let's put that back in there. Okay, yeah, so this was the accommodation area. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. But yeah, I mean, I'm not sure about you. I probably struggle to find enough people that I know uh, to fill up all the cabins on here. But yeah, if you've got a large social circle, big family, what a fantastic ship to take them on some nautical adventures. Okay, let's head back up onto the main deck now. And I'll go aft and I'll show you the owner's cabin. Great reception lobby area here as well. You can greet your guests as they come on board. Ready to take them away. So as you can see, the owner's cabin is full beam. We have the double bed positioned over here on the starboard side. Decent sized window over there on that bulkhead. Cabinetry either side of the bed. And the shelf up there as well. Some hanging locker space and another area to do some work. So yeah, you can come back here Use it as a bit of a bolt hole, catch up on your emails, watch your favorite YouTuber, and just get away from it all for a while. One of the fascinating things about this boat is that the owner and his wife operate this vessel on their own, which I, I think is just incredibly impressive when you take into account the size of this boat. Over here we have the door that leads out onto the starboard aft side deck. And in here, you can really see the size of the threshold on that door. Uh, you'd have to be in some seriously gnarly weather conditions to open that door and get an ingress of water. Here we have the ensuite, obviously the toilet, sink. And in here, we have the entrance down into what is an area for dry storage. So if you were thinking of buying this boat and heading off on a long distance autonomous cruise, as you will see, you've got plenty of space down here to stow all of your dry stuff. It goes all the way back, all the way back to the hull, which is probably about, about four or five foot from here to the hull. Over here on the port side, we've got some more dry storage space. In case you're wondering, yes, there is a lot of fridge refrigeration space down here. 
and freezer space. This is what is actually used as a freezer when the boat is being operated. But yeah, you could stow plenty of stuff down here. With so much storage space, this boat can be used for a variety of different purposes, including charters, expedition trips, fishing trips, or good old traditional exploring with your family and friends. She does also come with a recent CVO Inland Waterway certificate as well. Now the current owner has owned this vessel for 20 plus years. Uh, when he bought it, he had a young child, and this was the cabin uh, for the owner's child, which is a great place to have it. Obviously at the moment it's being used as a bit of a storage area, but we've got two single bunks here. So if you've got young children, you want to take with you when you head off over the horizon then they can stay in here and you've got two doors so if they tend to be a bit noisy like my children are you can shut that door and shut this door as well and you should still get a peaceful night's sleep but yeah it's a really great family friendly setup i love it but i'm interested to know what you think so please share your thoughts in the comments below Okay, so now it's a moment that I know many of you have been waiting for. Let's head down into the engine room. The boat has a single Caterpillar 450 horsepower, 331 kilowatt engine that was installed in 1999. It has 1300 hours on it and is cooled using a closed keel cooling system. She's also fitted with a 380 volt, 40 horsepower Corkman bow thruster installed in 1997. The single shaft is lubricated with an oil bath. A constantly circulating oil bath creates a layer of lubricant around the shaft, reducing friction and heat buildup compared to simple grease lubrication. Over here we have a great space for stowing all your tools, spanners, screwdrivers. We've got a sink over here on the port side. This boat has two generators. There's one generator over here on the port side other generator over there on the starboard side. At the moment, the port generator is running. Got a workbench over there with a vice. But yeah, look at this engine room. I mean, the space between the deck and the overhead must be at least 12, 14 feet maybe. The boat has a top speed of 11 knots with a cruising speed of nine knots. At nine knots, she consumes around 30 litres of fuel per hour, and with a fuel capacity of 12,600 litres, which is around 3,330 US gallons, you can expect a range of around 4,000 nautical miles. Drop that speed down to eight knots, then I would not be surprised if the range goes above 5,000 nautical miles. Here, all the way up there, to the top of the stack, look at that. Absolutely fantastic. The generators on this beautiful ship, which as you saw are behind silent boxes, are made by Perkins and each have a 40 kW output at around 1500 RPM. They have around 2000 hours on them and there's also another 10 kVA Yanmar generator as well. Also there are 10 service batteries with 3 generator batteries as well as a start battery. But I'm interested to hear what you think about this engine room, especially if you have a marine engineering background. So share your thoughts in the comments. Guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please don't forget to give this video a like. And also don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I really want to try and get to 100,000 subscribers if we can. So please hit that subscribe button. If you're interested in finding out more about this boat, then at the time of making and uploading this video, she is currently for sale. I'll leave a link to the broker's website in the video description. Thanks for watching. Until next time, fair winds and following seas. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you check out the video that I made about the Anache Trulliot. I'll leave a link in the video description. Another video of mine that I'd recommend as well is a video that I made about Astra, an extremely capable explorer yacht. I'll leave the link for that video in the video description. Alternatively, click on my link tree URL and you'll see all of my trawler yacht and explorer yacht playlists there.
If you have got access to a boat you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, then feel free to get in contact with me. You'll find all my contact details on my Linktree page, and I'm sure by now you know where to find that. A big thank you to my channel members for supporting my channel. If you'd like to join them by becoming a member, then you can follow the link that I'll pin in the comments. In the future, when I go on board these vessels, I'm going to be shooting some exclusive footage for my channel members. So now would be a great time to join my channel as a member. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please don't forget to give the video a like and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Until next time, fair winds and following seas.